Hi there. I thought I would share today how I managed to create my own yearly planner for the Remarkable 2 device. It looks a bit like this. I'll go into a bit more detail in a future video uh, as to, to what it can do exactly. But what a lot of people have done for it is created their own yearly planner. Uh, so pretty much a PDF with every page is, is a day in the planner. And there's a lot of templates that people have designed. They even sell them, these, these PDFs. But I wanted to look into how I could code up and create my own because I looked at these existing templates and none of them really suited how I would generally take notes every day. Uh, and this is part of my experiments with new ways of working um, and do away with my, my paper addiction to, to writing a notebook every day. Instead, I'm using this e-ink device every day. All this information of how I've done this code and I'm going to walk for the code next is available on GitHub. You can see here I designed the layouts for, for what I had in mind. Then I knocked up uh, it up in HTML and then converted the HTML to PDF. And fortunately, all the links in the PDF work, so you could jump around this, this 100 page document. And then this is what it looks like the end result. So I'm going to I'm going to share through the code and I'm going to share the, the experience with the, the app as well, uh, if that's OK. So yes, Let's jump into the code. So, uh, again, this is all on GitHub, but what I've done, first of all, is create a web application, which, again, this is probably overly complicated for it, for what I need it to do. All I need to do is to output 300 odd pages um, for, for each day. Uh, I'd have the actual here. So on the right hand side, I've got like a mirror of the device in front of me. So just to prove it, I can I can write on it. Okay, look, prove it, prove it. How you spell prove? Prove it. Yep, that should be pretty live. Yep, I can I can rip all that out. Except I'm not really demonstrating the that functionality. I've demonstrated this this planner that I've created. So I can jump around and go to March. I can then uh, say, oh, some something's happening in March. I don't know what, but something's happening. Happening in March. Maybe it's someone's birthday. Just remember. But then I can jump in to each day and say, okay, what's the second uh, of March, and I can take notes, daily notes. What I generally do is have like work notes at the top here, and then have uh, like personal notes here, like. Oh, I don't know, hair washing or something here. And then what I've tried to do is um, have a section, well, I designed a section for well-being to encourage me to drink water, to do some reading every day, push-ups and exercise, to do stretchings and patterns for Taekwondo. And that's working out quite well, so I'm really glad I put the, the well-being in there. Uh, I'm going to look at the code, how to deal with this in a minute. The other things I did was add hyperlinks to go back to the month. Uh, but before I do that, I made sure to have an extra page for every day because I was kind of running out of room on that first page. Kind of doubled the size of the document, but it only ended up being like 800 megabyte, uh, kilobytes anyway. So I can jump back to March. Uh, when I'm in a day, I can jump to a to the to-do list. So I've got like a separate works to-do list here. Uh, work to-do list. Build strategy deck. That's what we're doing business, right? Build strategy deck. I guess build strategy, right? Would help. Personal. Hang washing. So much washing. Yeah, so yeah, and they can go back to the home screen as well. So that's um, that's the daily planner and the, the the functionality of it. So let's now look at how I created that. So the approach I decided to take was to have it output in the, the HTML. I'll move that over to the side. Have it output in the HTML and then convert in the HTML to the PDF. And that seems to have worked a treat. So I'm going to run free the code. This is an ASP.NET MVC C Sharp web application. There's only really two or three files in here that have got anything. I've not even changed like the, the home controller uh, or added any custom models. The only two files that I've edited and tweaked really are the, the default index view and the layout. And the layout, to be honest, is I've just put the styles in the layout. This code could be tidied up drastically, don't get me wrong. These styles could be moved into style sheets. Some inline uh, styling could be moved out into classes. But this is just a proof of concept to get kind of show the, the idea. So let's just move this so I can compare uh, like for like. So if I 
the index. What have I got here? I'm setting the date so that if I want to run this again and create a new PDF for, for next year, I can do that just by incrementing that in theory. I've not tried it, but we'll see if it works uh, in about um, uh, 10 months' time. Create a new calendar class. That class just tells me how many days there are in a month and stuff like that. Now, to get the hyperlinks working, I've got these anchor tags with IDs dotted around the place that, and then hyperlinks back to those anchor tags so I can jump from uh, month to particular day or to from a, from the uh, to-do list back to back to a month or stuff like that. Then I've got the months at the top. Let's annotate as we go. That'll be fun. So these are the links at the top here. These are ones. Yeah. Um, this. And I'm going to run this just to prove that I'm not completely making this up. 2023 daily planner up here. That's that heading up there. Uh, again, I could should probably make that so it's you know you're running off the year variable. But hey ho, I can, this is all open source. So you can uh, make suggestions and change this and and, and branch off and uh, and do your own stuff if you want. Then I've got the links to the uh, to do lists. Again, these just link into anchor tags later on in the um, document. Then this new page class here, what this does, this most um, most HTML to PDF generators honors and works off the same sort of principle is that if you have this, uh, da, 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 what's it called, new page, and you have break after, um, it will insert a new page and that's exactly what it's done for the different pages in, in the document. I mean, the PDF document is, at the end of the day, it just looks like this. Uh, when it's not on your device, it's, um, it's ended up being over 700 pages long. But I can just scroll through it like that. This is what the um, page is there. And then after that, it'll start on the the uh, day pages. And I can click here and jump around. Um, yeah, again, quite pleased with this. Let's go back to the code. Right, where were we? Oh, yeah, they're the months at the top. Then we've got the links to the hyperlinks. Then we've got this start new page. Then it's got the links to the... Oh, and then we've got the works to do list. So let's go there. OK, uh, works to do list. That's the heading at the top. Uh, H ref at the year. Oh, yeah, I'm floating right again. Inline styling. Naughty, naughty me. But yeah, that's the uh, link there. And then we can go to the personal list there. Uh, so that's those links. And then I'm saying here, do a, a plain old bog standard table and have 22 rows, which are these these lines here. Again, playing around a lot. This is version seven of the template with things like um, the darkness of the lines, the line spacing, so that the, the text is, the lines weren't so small that you couldn't fit anything, but then they weren't so big that you were wasting room because you want to get as much on, on each, each page as possible. Uh, then, yeah. Then there's the actual, that was the work to-do list. So then exactly the same for the, the personal to-do list. Again, I could have just pulled this out into a view because it's exactly the same code that's been copied and pasted by this reference to personal work. So not to me, slap on the wrist. Then after the personal pages, I have got the month pages. Again, just to prove that. After personal pages and the, and the to-do lists. Here we go. I output each of these these month pages that there's January, there's February. And here I'm just saying for every month of the year, um, get the number of days in the month, create uh, the a link so I can go back to the beginning of this month page, the name of the month at the top there. So let's go to March. Don't know why I'm picking on March. But yep, says so the title at the top. Again, floating right the year up the top right. Uh, then I've got this Monday through Sunday at the top here. I can also change colour, by the way. Just might as well drop in some stuff that you can do on the remarkable. So if I want to go, let's go red for a bit. So I can uh, say, put the show. It's going to show it red there. Brilliant. Uh, let's just wipe that all out. Yeah. So these are the days at the top. The red. It's gone red. Brilliant. Sorry for that. Slight bit of black is going to bug me. There we go. Uh, and then, da, 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 da. then I'm saying I'm kind of working out which day of the week the first falls on here. And again, I've, I've converted this 
enum into an int, which I probably didn't actually need to do. All I need to do is work out how many blank days to use to put in uh, before then starting on day uh, the first of the of the month. Again, very very uh, lazy. All I've done here is I've righted the style and says make the box style, which are all these, give it a white border to make it invisible. So these there is actually two invisible days here with no text in, but um, let's just ignore them for now. Again, this has been some pretty lazy code, but it's again just to prove uh, the concept, and then you can improve upon it and, and tidy up the code if you want. And then again, this is just iterating the days in the month, going through them, creating these days, and then these links to the uh, hyperlinks at the top of each day we add on later on. Add this one, let's go to that first of all. That one is month note. So this is this bit at the bottom here. What I wanted to do is for each month as well have to link to each day. It just have a really brief section for, for what's going on in that month. Um, just to remind me more than anything at a glance. Uh, da, da, da. Again, yeah, that's it's written there. There's only five lines there. I could probably improve this uh, and add another line at the bottom there. But what I found was, but some months had one, two, three, four, five. Some some uh, weeks longer than others. No, same length number of length weeks, but great number of weeks in it. So sometimes that would drop off the end there, which which was not what I wanted. Uh, then I'm iterating through for the month, and that generates 12 month pages. Then I'm having this here that is doing the, the break line, which is creating a brand new ready for the next page. And then I'm going and producing, producing, protruding, produ producing every single uh, one of the day pages, which uh, is over here. So that's after the month, so we need to go all the way to after. Sorry, beg your pardon, so we need to go December, and then after December, here we go, we start on the 1st of January. So now it produces 365 pages of them. And then, uh, like I said, I've also produced an extra day as well, just because I had was filling up this and realized I needed maybe some room for spillover to the code. Cool. Yep. And then again, I won't walk you through every line, probably figure out what it's going to be doing itself. So it's creating a table with a bunch of rows in again. Uh, and then again, this table structure is probably not optimal. But uh, let's go and look at one a day, shall we? 3rd of March. Again, it got this heading section here. This is a table. Uh, and then I think that's a cell with another table inside. Again, I could do it differently, but I did it this way. So what you can do. Uh, and then a place in there for, for well-being as well. Stuff, which again, it's working out pretty well. Definitely drinking more water. And then, uh, as I said, an extra page as well, which is really, really useful. I use that all the time. And that's all the code for generating the, the, uh, the HTML. Now I will prove that by running it. It shouldn't take that long to run. Okay, so that will run. It's running. Waking up. Normally not this slow. Somewhere? Ah, here we go. That was slow, man. Okay. So it's running on here. Uh, remember the address that it's running at, because we'll need that again to generate the, the PDF. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the font is humongous. That's fine. The the what the HTML looks like um, isn't necessarily a one-for-one -one reflection of what the PDF is going to look like. You kind of need to play around with it. You will get four of these months on each line and stuff like that. So long as you're happy with that, it, it will work. The other thing that looks a bit peculiar is that. Um, there's no margin between where we know we're putting these page breaks in there. So that looks a bit odd. But again, don't worry about it because we're going to produce the PDF and the PDFs, what the PDF looks like is, is what we're interested in. So 
that does run and that is again a whole bunch of, of HTML that's been output there lots and lots of pages quite long uh, just remember that address because we'll need that then if we go over to look at the, the console application now there's quite a few different libraries that convert HTML to PDF. The one I've used, and this is about the third one I've tried and the only one I've got working so far, is uh, one that's created by Syncfusion. And this is all the code that I, I use to, to run it. Yeah. So uh, first of all, I'm registering the license and I've actually got a license key in here. Um, you will have to pay for the license key unless you can get a hold of one somehow. Uh, else, what you might want to do is just strip out, swap out the the code for generate the PDF from the code that generates the HTML, like like what I've done, and just use a different tool. You can actually produce the PDF just to see what the layout will look out like, look like without the key, um, but it will water mark it, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So when I, if I run this again, you've got to make sure you put the the URL in there that's it's actually running on. Uh, you will need to run the web application and then before, as before and while you're running this one, and this will just request that uh, that web page and then create the PDF and save it at this location. Again, some settings there just to say give you as much space as possible on the page, so don't bother with the margin stuff like that. Now, uh, if you don't, and that only takes about 10 seconds to run, which is which is quite impressive considering the, the number of pages it's creating and the amount of HTML that it's actually processing under the hood. Uh, if you if you um, don't have a license key, which here I've actually blanked it out if, uh, for putting it into uh, uh, GitHub, because I'm not going to commit my Syncfusion license key, not intentionally anyway. Um, so if, I, if you actually commented out this line, and this is in the GitHub guide as well. If we come out those and then run it, it will actually produce you a PDF, but it will be watermarked a lot like this, which is fine if you just want to figure out what it's going to look like. I think all the all, yeah all the links work. It, I'm pretty sure it's all the pages, so like 700 odd pages. Yeah, it goes all the way to end of December there. Um, so go back to the top, December. So you can get an idea of what it would look like, and you, I wouldn't probably use it with the, <laughs> with the, um, the watermark, but it gives you a good idea of what it is before before you pay for it. Now, if you do manage to get a free HTML to PDF converter working, that's not the Syncfusion one. I please do let me know because I kind of want to know. I was unable to find one. I played around with a few, but they weren't quite right and didn't quite work how I wanted. So if you do manage to find one. Um, please let me know, and, and uh, I would be, and I'll add it to the the GitHub so that people have options to swap out, right? Okay, so again, I'll put this video on YouTube, but if you want to pull down this code and have a play with it yourself, it's on my GitHub profile. There's some um, really brief, uh, naughty instructions of how to get started, what to do if you you don't have a license key and just want to see what it's like. And I've also provided the actual template as well uh, for the PDF because if you have a remarkable device and you, you like the look of my template um, then you can use that as well. I use that every day. Uh, that's all the code. Yep fantastic. Now I love creating an open source project and helping the community like this so if you want to see more projects like this do go ahead and follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube and you'll see all sorts of projects like this normally around augmented reality but I thought I would have a go at this new ways of working um, try some new technology to replace my obsession with paper note taking. Now you take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.